Welcome to the International Space Station. This is Mission Control. Before you get your first assignment, you'll need to get oriented with your tablet. Look at your tablet, and I'll walk you through its functions. The first section displays your tasks. The current ta this and the if navigate out of the node and into the when you reach the just look now. Na we need to prepare for the arrival of the HTV resupply vehicle. Get familiar with your new home while we wait for word from Scuba Space Center. Uh-oh. Sounds like you're going to need a space sickness bag and fast. We've got them stowed in the PMM.
Once you start to feel better, check out the video on your tablet to understand what's going on with your vestibular system. Astronauts tend to experience sensations of dizziness and disorientation for the first few days in space. On Earth, sensors in the muscles and joints and in the inner ear help astronauts know how they are oriented and moving. But these senses need gravity so they don't work well in space. Fortunately, astronauts' brains adapt quickly and learn to trust their eyes over the other senses. Astro We need to prepare for the arrival of the HTV resupply vehicle. Get familiar with your new home while we wait for word from Scuba Space Center.
vehicle is approaching. Install the camera in the wharf and get some pictures for ground analysis. Headache coming on? Maybe a stuffy nose? Many of your fellow astronauts start to deal with symptoms of cardiovascular fluid shift around this point in their flights. Another symptom of fluid shift is a puffy face. Check out the before and after pictures of your crewmates in their quarters. Take a look at the video on your tablet for an explanation, then get some pictures of the HTV. On Earth, our bodies have quite a few ways to keep fluids circulating, in spite of the forces of gravity. In space, the absence of gravity causes the fluids to shift upwards, leading to a puffy face, stuffy nose, and headaches. The fluid shift makes the body think that it has too much water and triggers systems to purge fluids, resulting in a significant loss of water and a 10 to 20% loss of blood plasma volume. Because the heart has to do less work, it may become smaller. The consequences of these changes in the cardiovascular system can be combated by exercise and an increase in electrolyte fluid intake before returning to Earth. We'll need the cupola windows open for the HTV capture. Make sure they're ready. Is everything all right? If you're having trouble seeing, it could be another symptom of living in microgravity. The glasses in Node 2 might help.
it looks like the glasses have helped your vision. Now take a look at the video on your tablet for an explanation of what happened to your vision. Then make sure the cupola windows are all open. In microgravity, fluid buildup may cause increased pressure in the skull and brain. This can affect the eye in several ways. Choroidal folds, swelling of the choroid, which is a tissue with a lot of blood vessels. Optic disc edema, swelling of the optic nerve where it meets the globe of the eye. Optic nerve sheath distension. Some astronauts experience changes in their vision, such as farsightedness and scotoma. These may remain when the astronaut returns to Earth. Research is continuing in order to find a solution to these problems. We've got a while before you'll birth the HTV with the robotic arm. Why don't you go help your fellow crewmate with their exercise session? Muscles start to slowly atrophy as soon as you're in microgravity. Take a look at your tablet for more information on muscle loss. In microgravity, some muscles shrink because they do less work and your body doesn't need to maintain them. Muscles that are typically used to fight gravity and keep us standing, such as those around the spine and calves, are affected the most. These muscles can lose up to 20% of their mass over the course of a mission. Exercise is used to help maintain muscle strength and mass. Sounds like you might be getting a head cold. Take a look in the U.S. lab for some medicine to help with your cold. The medication must have helped. You sound much better. Your tablet has a video showing how the immune system may be affected by microgravity. The body's immune system is altered during spaceflight. This is due to many factors. Various immune cells travel through the bloodstream searching for invaders. In space, aspects of the immune system appear weakened, which could lead to infections. Other aspects appear overactive, which could cause allergy or hypersensitivity. Certain viruses, such as the virus that causes chickenpox, have been shown to reactivate in microgravity. This doesn't mean the astronauts are sick, but is evidence of immune changes in astronauts that may precede disease. Research on ISS is continuing to characterize exactly which parts of the immune system are altered during spaceflight. It's time to grab the HTV. Head to the cupola. The robotic workstation should be ready to go.
That didn't go too well. We're going to reset the arm in HTB. Give it another try. You might want to review your flipbook and then try again. Great job! We're tightening the snares now. We'll move the HTB into position so that you can berth it. Controlling the arm is pretty tricky. A ground controller is taking over and will birth the HTV for you. All right, you did it. Give us a few seconds to secure the latches. Looks like we're all set. Go ahead and grab an apple and milk pouch from the HTV supplies. Nutrition is very important for your bones in microgravity. Take a look at your tablet to find out why. On Earth, 
Our bones are constantly being regenerated by cells called osteoblasts and osteoclasts. In microgravity, less bone is rebuilt since there is less need for our skeleton to support our bodies. This results in bone loss similar to that in people with osteoporosis. Astronauts are attempting to combat this loss of bone through a combination of nutrition and exercise. Great job! You've completed all your tasks. Feel free to enjoy the rest of your stay on the ISS. Mission Control out.